Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, September 10th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here we are at the peak day climatologically of the Atlantic hurricane season. Right about this time of year, early to mid-September, we typically see the most activity during the hurricane season. And on 80, in 80% of years, usually on this day, we have at least one named storm in the Atlantic. But this year, we're in the 20% no-named storms, uh, but there are areas to watch despite that. And specifically, this wave in the eastern Atlantic may have a good chance of acquiring a name very soon. Uh, but right now, we're going to focus first a little closer to home. There's this little tiny low pressure area that came up from the south over the last couple of days and has now acquired some convection. And we see that going off today. This afternoon, we've also seen some low-level spin develop with it, a little bit of circulation now. You can see west winds on the south side, northeasterly winds on the north side. So we are seeing some spin, and although pressures are high in the area, when you see spinners like this show up over this very warm water of 30 degrees Celsius, 29 to 30 Celsius, east of Florida at the peak of the hurricane season, got to pay attention. These things can spin up very quickly in the backyard. And uh, although we are seeing convection going off with it today, it is looking a little bit fragile. This may be... Uh, a burst that's not very robust. It may be just a pulse of convection that fades away later tonight, but we will have to keep an eye on it. This will take about 48 hours to move slowly westward toward the Florida Peninsula, and during that time may be able to come become a tropical depression or weak tropical storm, but there are some very significant factors in the environment that will likely prevent this from becoming a very significant system, and one of those that may be hard for you to see on the video are these milky white cirrus clouds just screaming from northeast to southwest over the Jacksonville area. You might be able to see them moving very quickly across your screen, and uh, this is due to an upper level ridge over over the southeastern US and the northeasterly winds on this back side are going to be pushing south with time over the next day or so and by the time they make it over what is uh, currently designated 92L once they make it over the system, they'll be shearing these thunderstorms off away from the center. And this is one of the worst setups you can have for a tropical disturbance because not only do these northeasterly winds shear the system, but they're also convergent in nature. That means air is piling up aloft in a flow like this. And when air piles up aloft, it tends to sink. And that can suppress thunderstorm activity that 92L might try to generate like it is right now. Uh, so it has about 24 hours before this unfavorable pattern sets in. And during that time, again, it could develop. But by 24 hours out, we see the GFS showing the system in yellow here, showing low level vorticity or spin. And then upper the upper level winds in these barbs here, again, northeasterly flow by 24 hours is already pressing right into the system. And this will likely halt whatever intensification trend intensification trends it may have and by 48 hours the system is moving into Florida but fully embedded in this northeasterly flow and this continues as the system moves all the way across the Gulf of Mexico potentially making it all the way to the Mexico and South Texas area but this northeasterly flow stays with it the whole time and may prevent it from ever becoming anything significant. But as always, with little systems in the backyard like this, keep an eye on it. You know, wary eye as it comes toward Florida. Could acquire a quick name, uh, but fairly unlikely at this point to become a strong system of any type. But heavy rain may affect the southern and central Florida peninsula as the system moves slowly across the area during the next couple of days. So heavy rain, probably the main story with this little system. Now, the bigger uh, story in terms of the tropics may end up being this wave uh, west of the Cape Verde Islands, now Invest 91L, uh, spinning away here rather elongated as it uh, tries to get out of the monsoon trough in here as it leaves Africa. But as this comes west and west-northwest, or west-northwest and northwest over the next couple of days, it may have a chance to acquire a name, and many of the models, including the European, do show this becoming at least a tropical storm as it moves out in this direction. With this big upper low over the central Atlantic, this generally ventilates systems by providing an outflow channel toward the northeast, so systems in this area generally have a nice setup for some kind of strengthening as they leave the monsoon trough. But there is still a lot of dry, stable air out over the central Atlantic, and with as with many waves this season, you know, a lot of them have died once they come out here all alone. Uh, once they separate from the monsoon trough away from their homeland in Africa, they start to uh, choke on this dry air. And that's happened to many a wave that has come off Africa this year. Uh, but 91L does have more model support than any other wave we've seen so far this season. So this may defy uh, its predecessors and finally develop out here.
but is likely to recurve early, as if we look at the GFS 500 millibar chart for day four, we see 91L here becoming a storm on the GFS. Now here's the ridge to the north, but notice how far north the ridge is and how far north the storm is, already at latitude 25 and not even to 50 west yet, and uh, storms in this location very rarely make the turn back toward the west and threaten land. These usually find their way out along the western periphery of this ridge to the north, and you see this troughiness coming down over the northeast U.S. and southeast Canada. That tends to erode the western side of this ridge, and this will probably find its way out to sea here, probably even east of Bermuda, which is over here. Some ensemble members do still show a, a weaker, more westerly track before recurving. That could possibly still put Bermuda in the forecast zone for this system. Uh, but right now, the majority opinion is that this moves out to sea east of Bermuda, well away from land. There's another wave behind it that you see down here on the 500 millibar signature. This is still over Africa right now, so we can't really say much about this one until it comes out over the water. But these waves will continue coming off one after another until about the end of September, early October is when we start shutting down the eastern Atlantic. But we're a ways away from that yet. Looking around the rest of the Atlantic, we have convection firing in the southwestern uh, Caribbean. Not much expected there in the near term, but if we look at the GFS ensemble mean pressure anomaly uh, for day three, we see this old front that comes down off the southeast coast. We've got our little system that we talked about in the Bahamas, now west of Florida, and uh, this is under, again, a highly sheared environment, very unfavorable near Florida, but farther to the southwest you got to watch underneath these big cold highs that dive down behind these fronts. This is a little early in the fall for this, but we do have this pattern where this high dives down and this converges air, makes it pile up toward the south, and you have to watch the southwestern Gulf and Bay of Campeche for possible development uh, in a pattern like this with high pressure to the north that really helps to pile up air in that area. And that can take several days. Uh, that process can take a while. This is day three. It could be day seven or day 10 before we actually see this initiate anything down here. But this is an area that we'll probably need watching over the next week to 10 days. And then we see another hurricane approaching uh, Mexico from the southeast. Uh, possibly clipping the Baja Peninsula similar to Hurricane Norbert a few days ago, and this might be worth watching for that area of the world as well on the Pacific side of things during the next week. So other than that, a rather quiet hurricane season continues in the Atlantic, and as we've expected this year to be, this is now the peak of the hurricane season, and we do have some areas to watch this wave in the east and this little uh, homegrown system near Florida. We'll keep an eye on those over the next couple of days, and other than that, no imminent threats are expected during the next few days. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.